How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here, and I'm glad you could stop by. So today is a little bit different from normal. For starters, I'm indoors, so please forgive me on the audio, but it is what it is. The reason I'm indoors is because, well, I'm going to be dissecting owl pellets. These things are fun. But first, I got to talk to you a little bit about what owl pellets are. Birds of prey, as you know, are predators. They feed on, generally, mammals, insects, and other meat items. Owl pellets, or I should say pellets, are not exclusive to owls. Many birds produce pellets. Hawks, kestrels, you know, um, peregrine falcons, just many birds produce pellets produce pellets. What pellets are, <laughs> it's not poop, okay? If it, if it looks or smells like poop, then you better just put it down and move on because that's not what pellets are. Pellets are closer, they're basically bird vomit in a way, more like a, a cat's hairball or furball that they cough up because what goes on is birds, as you know, they don't have teeth. They don't chew their food. They, they swallow it whole, or in some cases, they pull off bits and pieces, swallow those pieces whole. They don't chew anything up. Owls and hawks, they, they love to feed on mice and other small mammals, right? So that includes fur and teeth and the whole skeletal structure. Those parts are not digestible. A lot of birds first swallow the food into the crop that they can store it there for later on and pull it out of the crop, bring it further down into the gizzard or stomach and digest it. Owls do not have a crop, which is pretty interesting. So whatever food they swallow, say it's a, a mouse, they swallow it head first and it goes straight down into the gizzard and that's where they digest it. So all these birds, uh, what goes on is they absorb the juices and vitamins and minerals, you know, the digestible bits, and then what's left behind are the teeth and bones and fur, and that gets all compressed, and then more nutrition is sucked out of it, and then eventually they will cough it up. And you can kind of guess, you know, you get clues as to what type of bird these pellets come from. If, if you find this under a stand of evergreens and there's maybe really is some poop nearby and it's in say round puddles, it's probably from an owl because they perch upright and the poop comes straight down. If it's a red-tailed hawk, I don't know if you've seen it before, but it squirts out. They kind of lean and shoot it out. Don't, don't be within firing range. If you find little bits of insect matter, like bits of the elytra or exoskeleton glistening around the outside and you know, you can just see it from picking up the pellet, which by the way, you might want to wear gloves, then it probably wasn't from an owl. It, definitely not from a barn owl. Barn owls, which are what these are from, they feed almost exclusively on the small mammals and rodents. What makes this easier for me is it's nice to have some tools. So I just carved some little sticks here that I can use to, you know, pick things apart because mouse bones are tiny. You know, shrews, mice, voles, they're tiny. Their rib bones are very small, and I don't want to break them, and my fingers are big and clumsy. Favorite item can be a set of tweezers. That's always good to have. I have a pen. I have a couple trays to put things in, you know, that I find. Maybe put all the fur here and then the bones here. I don't know. And I have this piece of paper here that will make it easier for me to see what I'm doing. You know, it gives you contrast. You know, good thing about... Uh, 2020, 2021, we all have gloves. It's advisable to wear a face mask. I'm not going to because I'm filming and talking. So you never know what you're gonna find in this. It's kind of like a little scavenger hunt. That's what makes it so fun. If you're doing this, it is really fun to keep a camera present as I'm touching my hat and everything else with this. Anyways, we're moving on. But, you know, mice, ribs and stuff are fragile, so I don't really want to break or damage what I find. Oh my god, look at this excitement. I just broke a bone. I just found what looks to be a little bit of a hind leg, and I've got this bigger bone here, which I'm willing to bet is the rest of the hind leg, we'll see. 
I might actually set one of these in a little container of water or rubbing alcohol and see if that makes this an easier process. Might not look big, you know, in the grand scheme of things, but for being in this pellet, there's a large bone. I'm excited. I'm willing to bet that that's another piece of the hind leg. They look a little bit too big to be a, a field mouse. Maybe a wood mouse. They're bigger than, than say, a house mouse. Uh, could be from a vole. This looks like a little scapula, which I suspect is maybe from a mouse. That looks small for the bones I'm seeing here. Yeah, this is, this is a skull. I can already tell this is a skull here. You've got the two little front teeth here at the front, which I can see. So this is cool. This is going to be a skull. That's going to be exciting. to save that. Several ribs present. It's incredible. There's so much to find in just one pellet. I've got the dark brownish gray fur, and it seems that I also have some brown fur present, kind of like in a deer mouse. At the same time I started this pellet, I actually started soaking one of my smaller pellets. And I wanted to set this one aside and dig into that one to see if it's any easier and just to see, you know, if there's any relation between the size of bones in the bigger pellet versus the smaller pellet. I wanted to lay them out into the skeleton, you know, the complete skeleton or as close to it as I could get. But finding, you know, three skulls present, that means there's bones from three different skeletons present at least and that just takes a long time however I did give one of these smaller pellets to my friend uh, you know a couple of days ago <laughs> believe it or not she picked it apart and assembled them into as close to a complete skeleton as she could get based on what bones she found and she dried it off yesterday and this thing looks awesome so after I show you these bones here I want to show you what she uh, did with her bones. I simply just placed them out on this page, not in any particular order. In fact, I put liked bones with each other just out of habit. I didn't even realize I was doing it. I have several skulls present. Of course, I always love finding skulls. Who doesn't? And the jaw bones are really neat, especially in some of these rodents because they have unique teeth. But I find these rib bones to be extremely fascinating because they're so small, they're so fine and minute, they make a toothpick look like some massive pillar to an ancient Roman you know, structure of some sort. These things are tiny, but the metacarpals and foot bones are smaller still. They're perfectly bone shaped, but they are almost in the microscopic world. I place several bones on this quarter here just to give you a better impression at the type of scale you might be dealing with when you're looking at rodent bones and owl pellets. It's a whole different world. These vertebra bones are always exciting for me to find in the wild. When I find deer vertebrae or fox vertebrae, I'm really excited. I always take one or two of them home with me because they're unique looking, they've got a cool shape to them, and they're just neat. But the vertebrae towards the head have a hollow center to them, and that's really cool. With these pellets, it's fun to clean those out and try not to break the bone, of course, and they're just really cool looking. So I, those are among my favorites. Those metacarpals and the rib bones are probably my favorite bones to find in these pellets, and then of course the jaw bones and skulls are really cool too. But overall, in its entirety, the entire skeleton is really cool. And here you go. How cool is this? These are the bones from the pellet that I gave my friend because I'm really cool and I give my friends pellets. She did a great job in laying these bones out in relation to one another and it really gives you a great understanding and appreciation for the different function and purpose of each bone. My favorite part is seeing how perfectly formed that little socket is on the hip to accommodate the ball joint at the top of the femur. It reminds me a lot of the snap fit models that we used to do, or pretty much any kind of toy that you would put together. It truly illustrates how perfectly adapted life really is, how each part serves its purpose, how it fits together to form a complete mechanism that works in unison 
nothing short of perfection in my opinion, and it's just purely amazing. Hats off to my friend. So as you can see, dissecting an owl pellet is really fun. You never know what you're going to find. You know, the skulls are, are really cool, especially finding more than one skull per pellet. You know, it's super exciting. All these little bones are fun and piecing together, you know, putting little clues together tell you a story of perhaps what this bird's night was like. It gives you an insight as to where the bird might live and at least what its diet was for that time of year. It's really cool. You can find where these animals live and maybe sit and wait at night. Perhaps you'll see an owl on the hunt. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for bearing with me with the audio problems. Hope it didn't gross you out too much. And uh, I'm going to soak some of these and, you know, my last one here and see what's inside it. This is really cool. It's a very fun process. And I wanted to thank you guys for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.